What's up, everybody? This is Symphonia Fan 64 here, and welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy 1, Dawn of Souls. Now, in the last episode, I pretty much talked about everything there is to know outside of the battle system for Final Fantasy. And it got boring and longly drawn out. So, in this episode, I'm going to continue talking. But in this episode, I'm going to be talking about the battle system. Now, before I actually do talk about the battle system, I actually realized I forgot a few things in the last part to talk about. That I just completely skimmed over. I, uh, I apologize if uh, you caught that. But there were a few things I did not talk about or I didn't know. So, I accidentally or purposely skimmed over them. So, yeah. So, okay, in the last part, I actually forgot to mention what black magic is. Yeah, I actually forgot to explain what black magic is. It is go figure. Okay, so, here goes. Black magic is the complete opposite of white magic and that's the pretty much the main main summary for bla what black magic is it is whereas white may white magic is protective and defensive black magic is strictly offensive meaning you can cast elemental spells now there are other spells that you can inflict status ailments so pretty much the fuck and can be enjoyed in either two ways. You can either cast a giant fireball and completely set your enemies ablaze, or you can poison them and watch them die a slow and painful death. Okay, now the la the next thing I forgot to mention is, well, I didn't know what it was, but now I do, is what is stamina? I actually did look this up, and stamina is actually... Your chances of enduring a hit. So, how strong the enemy is, hit the how strong the enemy is. That enemy's attack is cut in half, depending on which character is attacked, and this is add to added to your defense. See, as you can tell, I have. For example, I have uh, stamina, a stamina point of 15, and my defense is 1. So, I'm going to get hurt, hurt a lot. Right here. But as for other characters, they get... And that would go the same with every other character, because I don't have good equipment, and I am going to do that. Now, the last thing I forgot to talk, and I actually have to go into Cornelia anyway to do this, is I forgot to talk to somebody. Yeah, this girl, right near the uh, cathedral. And let's see what she says. Come back here, you. Please rescue Lady Sarah. And that's it. Wasn't that worth it? Okay, so now I have to go buy some shit. And pretty much that's... Pretty much gonna be straightforward. So what we have here, we have a, nunch a nunchuck, knives, staves, a rapier, and a hammer. So I'm going to get a rapier. Her, I almost bought a second one there, and a hammer, and that should do it. And that should do it for everybody. Now to get some armor. I'm going to get some chainmail for myself and leather armor. Alright, so now we equip and I get to show off that optimal thing. So obviously it picks the strongest out of all the weapons I have and automatically gives it to him. Thank god they leather armor. And that's about it. So 
So there we go, Sal. Because obviously I'm not going to be using this stuff. And holy crap, I have enough magic. I have enough gill left. 393. That's not bad. So now I can buy some magic. And I can explain what that is. So here's some white magic. Okay, so here's your pretty much your basic level 1 magic. Alright? So, cure is basically your... Well, basically, it does what it does. It cures here's your party but by, by uh, healing them a little bit. Now, as you go along, you'll find stronger cure spells and whatnot, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Daya. Daya is a very unique spell in this game because... This is the only game that actually has this. This spell. And what it does is that it damages all undead foes, as it says in the description. So, but it only appears in this game. And as you can see on the left, on the right-hand corner, you see what uh, classes can learn this. So, and what... And... The ones that are highlighted are the ones that can actually learn this. So, Cure everybody can learn, but Daya can only be learned by a white mage or a white wizard. Okay, Protect raises a party's defense, one ally's defense. But Blink raises the caster's evasion, and only their evasion, so... Blink's not a very good spell, in my opinion, so I suggest getting Cure, Daya, and Protect. And I still have some more money left. whoop the frickin' do Okay, so now we go buy some Black Magic. And as with before... Uh, and as you can see, the knight changed to the ninja. Alright. Uh, okay, so... Okay. Fire, you cast... You set your enemy as a blaze. Sleep puts him to sleep. Focus lowers a foe's evasion. And last but not least, we have... have thunder, which... Or... Wait, I gotta, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. Okay. Hey, we have... Fire! Er, er, which deals fire damage. I'm sorry, I had to do this. And last but not least, we have thunder. Er, which deals lightning damage. Sorry, I had to do that. I beat you to that, Accenture Gamer. Take that. So, uh, the spells I would recommend you getting for your black mage are obviously fire, thunder. And sleep. Because later on, sleep will be a lot better in a future fight. So that's pretty much the main spells. And, oh, and wow. I completely almost drained my money. Okay, with that all put aside, it's finally time to discuss the battle system. Now, as you may know, in most RPGs, a battle is engaged via random encounter. Now, and as in most RPGs, depending on where your location is geographically, whether you're in the overworld map, map or in a dungeon, you'll face different monsters. So say if I'm in the grassy plain, you know, I'll come across certain monsters, but if I go in the forest, I'll, I'll go fight the same monster, but I'll also get encounter other monsters. So without further ado, I'm going to walk around the forest area and automatically we're sent into a battle with three goblins. Now, as you can see, we here we have the options of attack, magic, items, equip, and flee. Now, I'm just going to blaze through all this. So, attack, pretty much you do physical damage, and I can't scroll down through all my characters, so I have to actually give them each a command one at a time, so I can't skip, but 
However, if you do press B, if you give a character a wrong command, you can press B it. B and go back to that character and change their command. Alright, so attack deals physical damage. Magic allows you to use any magic spell within your magic pool. Well, items allows you to use items teams <laughs> inside the battle. Equip allows you to equip any weapon that you might have in your inventory. And then there's Flea. Now, with Flea, you're, you obviously run away from the battle and there's no consequence other than you're not going to get the guild or experience that you need. So, anyway, you don't necessarily have to go to the Flea command for everybody, you can actually press the L and R buttons and they automatically flee for you. Um, you're gonna not hardly ever see me flee from a fight because, um, I believe it was either Linkara or Spoonie who said, I AM A MAN! So, pretty much, yeah. I'm not gonna be running away from a battle and, unless you really need to, who, who, like, say you wanna get to a in or something or you really need, or one of your characters are is killed yeah that's the only time you're ever going to see me fight or flee now there are certain cases where you will not be able to flee at all most likely in triggered uh, battles or boss fights where you can't run away but sometimes due to because of one character's luck is not high enough the character will actually turn around and face the enemy again. But even though one has turned around, the other party can still manage to escape. Just because that one guy turned around doesn't mean you're automatically screwed. But if all of them turn around, that means your attempt to flee has failed. Now as you're fleeing, the enemy will still try to attack you. And so don't think you're gonna uh, escape from being hit. So, pretty much, yeah, as you can probably tell, well, I, you see the HP and the MP, so keep track of that during the battle. And, yeah, that's pretty much the battle system right then and there. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, that's the battle system. So, without further ado, well, there's one more er, aspect, aspect I'll cover. So, as we're going along, I'll explain that. So... Let's fight the goblins, who were originally known as imps in the NES version, but were changed when they made a imp enemy in later Final Fantasy games. So I'm just going to select all of them, and the unique innovation to this one is... Um, even though one enemy was killed... And look at that, I won! And I gained 40 experience, 18 gil. Now, I'm going to pause it right there. As you may have, as you may have probably guessed, as probably you have seen, um, above each character there was a two hit and a one hit. Now, this means that that is actually a damage multiplier. What it is is that it, it takes the attack, the current attack of your of that character, and multiplies it by that number. Now, the highest for most characters that can go is 8. However, the monk can go as high as, I believe it was, 14. Now, there are spells that can increase the hit ratio, but that's about it. Yeah. But the highest you can go normally is 8, with the exception to the monk, which I think it's 12, I believe, I don't know. But as you can see, his damage multiplier got boosted by two. And also, fun fact, in the original NES version, if an enemy was killed and all characters were selected on that, on that certain character, on that certain enemy, they would continue to hit nothing. I'm dead serious. 
they will hit nothing but air, where that enemy once stood, and you will waste an entire turn. So, in the previous game, you actually had to plan your spell, plan your attack out strategically. Whereas in this game, just select that one enemy, and as soon as that's dead, the party will pick a random monster to kill. It'll automatically for you, which I believe was very innovative. So as you can see, we can encounter goblins in this forested area. Now, most of the time, I am gonna... I am going to be cutting out random boss fights, but, um... I can probably tell you this episode's probably gonna be only 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm actually going to make this a short episode. But if I don't come across another enemy type, I'm probably just going to say, here's what you can fight, and be done and over with it. So, let's hope I come across the, another group of enemies. So, let's go walk around here. Okay, and... Oh, look at that! Okay, so, look at that, just as I say it. Now, yes, and sometimes enemies will come in greater numbers. So, here we have the Goblin Guards, which were originally known as Grey Imps. Again, same rules apply. Uh, now, the Goblin Guards are actually a stronger version of it, but they're not as strong as other enemies. Because that'll explain after this fight's over. So, pretty much, I'm going to kill all these guys. These, these by doing what I do best. Yeah, I get, yeah you actually get to see... Uh, the enemy actually attack for once. And you can sit and reduce their F. Slice them and dice them! Smack! Punch! And... Uh, uh, and Joel! takes him out with a knockout punch and I gain experience and we leveled up and certain uh, qualities will be leveled up uh, through each level and we grew to level two and Joel and Joel has the late he's at computer the mall so I'm going to have Felicia Heal him. Okay, so... I'm going to explain what other enemies you can fight here. Because I'm not gonna make this a very long episode, as I said. Unlike last time. So... Anyway. There are other enemies you can fight around this area. And as you can tell, I came across two types of enemies. Uh, the goblins and the goblin guards. Now, there are other, three other enemies that you can encounter here. The other enemies you can fight are wolves, which I will show Ace off if I encounter them, but other times I will just uh, pause the video and uh, cut out that battle entirely. But, yeah. Unless I do encounter them, and I'll show them off. Now, wolves are actually stronger than goblins, so be careful when you fight them, um, because even though you may be a little stronger, they will still own your ass. Now, the other enemies that you can encounter are the war wolves, which are sort of rare to find. I think. Now, the war warg wolves. Originally, they were called Red Wolves in the um, original NES version. They are, are, like the Goblin Guards, a stronger version of the Wolves. And the last enemy that you can encounter around this area, and very rare to find, but if you do, they're the strongest enemy you can encounter at this point, are the Crazy Horses which in the original they were known as Mad Horses. 
So, yeah, that's pretty much just it. So, the last thing I want to say here is, and right now it's gone on for 20 minutes, which really is how I actually wanted to end this off. Pretty much right now I'm just going to get just going to grind before I enter the Chaos Shrine, so yeah, the next part after this, we are finally going to be, be playing this game. We're finally, I'm finally done explaining everything that I can about this game. Aren't you all happy? I'm finally going to be playing this game for real and going on with the story. Hooray! So yeah. The last thing I want to say is, don't go to the Chaos Shrine yet, because the enemies there are a lot stronger than what you'll ever fight out in the overworld right now. They will own your ass. What my suggestion is to you is to level up your party until you reach, I would say, level 6. But until then, don't even think about going to the, the Chaos Shrine. Don't even think about that at doing that at all, because you will get your ass handed to you on a silver platter. So, with that said, I'm going to end it off here, and I will see you all again in the next part, which I might upload tomorrow. So, with that all said, this is Symphonia Fan, signing off.